Hello there ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? It's Alexander Hilly 123 here and it's time for a new video. And as you can see from the title, today I'm talking about the band Ocean Size and ranking their albums from worst to best. I've done this within the last couple of years with the band's Catatonia, my favourite band ever. Anathema, Porcupine Tree, today I'm doing the same with the band Ocean Size. Those bands had very, very big discographies, over 10 albums. Ocean Size only have 4 albums. They formed in 98, split up in 2011, and released four albums between the years 2003 and 2010. So four albums of very good quality within seven or eight years. You know that these guys meant business, and a few EPs as well. In fact, an EP that I totally forgot about, I'm going to listen to that on Spotify sometime over the weekend. I think it's called Home and Minor. I'm not going to be talking about that. EP because I don't even remember it, but uh, yeah, I totally forgot it existed in there. It's like, oh my lord, new old ocean size to listen to. That's cool. But I just like doing this because it's good to talk about good music. I know that sounds pretentious and patronizing, whatever, but some of these bands who've made amazing music that isn't a mainstream genre, they just get consigned to the history books. And bands like this are too good to be consigned to the history books. So if I can get a few people into a band that I love, that's absolutely fantastic. I do like talking about music. My channel is primarily about video games, but I have been doing these for the last year or so. And once in a blue moon, I'll continue to do them. I've already got a couple of bands in mind for who's coming up next in the worst to best series. We're looking forward to doing those videos, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, please don't get salty if you don't agree with my list. I did listen to the whole discography before making this video. And in all honesty, there's no bad ocean size album. However, there has to be an album which is my least favourite, and it is the fourth and final album, Self Preserved While the Bodies Float Up, which was released in 2010. And I should actually just mention to you guys that Ocean Size, although they're labelled as progressive rock, for me personally, there are, is also influences of punk, post rock, hardcore, uh, metal, shoegaze, shit like that, all bunched into one. And I like all those genres, ladies and gentlemen. Not so much post-rock and punk, though, and hardcore. And I do get that with the instrumentation and Mike Bennett's vocals, but I still love it when Oceanside do it. But, yeah, I get the feeling that some of the bands that Oceanside have been influenced by, I wouldn't actually like. But anyway, Self Preserved While the Bodies Float Up, the fourth and final album, released in 2010. By the way, guys, if you want to see in the drop-down menu what my list is before I actually mention it, then please uh, give that a click, click on more, and I will put a timestamp as to when I start talking about each individual album and a link to my favorite song off each album. And this album, the last uh, from 2010, runs in at just 51 minutes in length, much, much shorter than their other three albums. And before release, Mike Bennett was saying that this album was gonna be heavier. And there's a few quotes from him here saying there's only a few bands he loves who are strictly heavy only. And he cites Slayer as an example. And I do get what he m means though, because I, I remember when I was younger and I was a teenager and you know when you've got to be on public transport around other people and people listen to music and people are just listening to like new metal for about the whole freaking journey, pummeling heavy riffs and it's like, I, shit, Jesus Christ. I'm not saying, oh, my music is so varied, but I can have shuffle on and it's not schizophrenic, for example, to listen to Nick Drake and then listen to Slayer next. That happens very, very often for me and for a lot of people, I guess, but I don't often listen to the same kind of music for hours in a row and I get the feeling that a lot of people do like people who listen to mainly non-stop heavy metal. I don't know how they do it, I'd have a headache, and I love old school Slayer, but uh, yeah, but when this album actually came out, I have to say, I didn't really understand where all this heaviness was coming from, that they were talking about pre-release, not that that's an issue, because I don't think it's exactly what Ocean Size did best, however, there is a few, and there are a few heavier tracks, per Cardiac, <laughs> the first one on the album, this is a colossus, doomy banger with some heavy riffs, sets you up for the album but then superimposer comes up with an absolute gorgeous guitar piece which only lasts for about 10 seconds in the last quarter of the track 
Oscar acceptance speech is beautiful. Silent and Transparent is my favourite track on the album. Give it a listen in the drop down box below. But the band that I feel like the band Oceanside were influenced mostly here, it might be just a coincidence, uh, a band called Mew, M-E-W. Mike Bennett's vocals here, he takes on a much higher pitched voice for some reason. It's purposeful, of course, it's not just by coincidence. And the band Mew, M-E-W, the vocalist sounds like that as well. It's kind of an androgynous kind of style where you don't really know for the time around is this a male or a female who's singing here. And yeah, Mew made some great music back in the day. The new music isn't so good. But um, I, I feel that influence on this one. I think it's my tale and I'll chase it if I want to. That particular track, Mr. Simon Neal, I think his name is, from Biffy Cairo. He makes a guest appearance a very strange track with shouted vocals a little bit all over the place off kilter i guess you'd say but i really like the more melodic and beautiful songs here like ransoms a penny's weight and pine something that i always think ocean size was really good at is the more melodic moments absolutely beautiful and the penny's weight and ransoms give me goosebumps my favorite track on the album is silent transparent but yeah only 10 tracks on the album running at 51 minutes in length why is it my least favourite? I don't really have an answer. It's just because the other three I like more and there are more tracks that I enjoy. Like, it's my tale and I'll chase it if I want to. I can give it a take. It's Super Imposter, I've never loved. Um, Builders of Rocket then. Perp Cardiac's heavy, but I don't know if it's got much depth to it. It seems more like a an album. It is obviously the first song on the album, but it kind of sounds like an intro track itself. But that's really the only criticism that I have. It's still a fantastic album, but one had to be my least favourite. And next up, ladies and gentlemen, my third favourite Ocean Size album, and one I think a decent proportion of the fan base would have as their favourite, is the debut album in 2003 called Effleress. <laughs> and this one runs in at over 75 minutes in length, an hour and 15 minutes. 12 tracks from a group of young lads at this stage. I don't know how old they all are, but I bet they were only in their early 20s or whatnot. This is an ambitious record to say the least. And um, yeah, absolutely amazing. They wore the heart on the sleeve here. You can see a few of the influences that a track called Saturday Morning Breakfast Show sure was a, a piece of it that just reminds me of Oceans by Pearl Jam. And Unravel sounds like a tool instrumental kind of shit that was actually on uh, 10,000 Days, which was actually released after this, so maybe Tool were influenced by Ocean Size. <laughs> May as well be, because they're bloody amazing. But yeah, this the album opens up with I Am The Morning, fantastic anthemic um, opening track. Catalyst, a beautiful rock song, absolutely perfect. One Day All This Could Be Yours, this repeated line of One Day This Could All Be Yours, and then a really, really heavy riff. Absolutely fantastic. Kind of sounds like it's in slow motion, but it's in heavy. you got to listen to it, ladies and gentlemen. Some incredibly long songs on here. Massive Bereavement, 10 minutes. Saturday Morning Breakfast Show, 9 minutes. Long Forgotten, at 9 minutes, with an unbelievable bass line. I'm not technical with my music, ladies and gentlemen. I can't dissect these tracks one by one individually and tell you all the nuances of what's going on here but listen to the bass in that track it's unbelievable you wish which reminds me of a track on the album after this album the second uh, everyone in two position um and yeah just amazing guitar playing bass playing then it's vocals a mixture of rock and heavier rock and what i said before about post rock and instrumental segments and it's just, it's a little bit all over the place, this album, and it's maybe a little bit too long. It's not that the, tr the track list in here it maybe could be a little bit better, but I'm nitpicking now because I don't really dislike any of these songs. Although Amputee, I've always thought was a little bit of, a, I think it was the single on the album. I might be wrong there, but it is a little bit of a dull track, that one, to be perfectly honest with you. Um... It says here the piano line on track 9, Unravel, is an excerpt of the second piece, Le Gibe, maybe, from Maurice Ravel's Gaspard de la Nuit. Fucking hell, I'm French, I don't know if that's pronounced right. But, I said it sounded like a tool instrumental, it still does, but there's a bit of information on that particular track. But yeah, I mean, 
like I say, as debut albums go, this has got to be one of the most ambitious of all time, and I keep saying that word, but it's true. Such long tracks. Any band can make long songs, and they're perhaps shit, but these aren't. They're well written, well developed, well paced, with heavier sections leaning into gorgeous um, instrumental parts and very spacious. Bennett's vocals, always pretty good. He's not one of my favourite vocalists of all time, but they do the job. And I can't always understand what he's saying, and I don't know exactly what he's saying. Obviously, we have Genius.com and different lyrics websites for that. But overall, yeah, I do like Bennett's vocals. But yeah, that's Efflores, the debut album. And the song that I'm putting as my favourite here is You Wish. Perhaps one that a lot of people would say is a little bit generic, but I just absolutely love it. I'm not just going to put one of the longer songs on, just because it's longer. But anyway, my second favourite, and this is the one where I feel that most people would say it's the third favourite or the fourth favourite. They're all great, like I was saying before, but it is Everyone in Two Position, the second album released in September 2005. It says here, the album uh, final appearance of bassist John Ellis. According to vocalist guitarist Mike Bennett, at the beginning of Ornament the Last Wrongs, there are all these weird ambient noises, and what it was is that a friend of ours was in the Amazon jungle and recorded all these parrots. They sounded like kids laughing and shouting, not parrots. Now, I've gotten, obviously, the Wikipedia pages up here, but I did not see that quote i am listening to that song because it's bloody amazing after this video because i want to i want to listen to that now myself i absolutely love the album cover as this one as well uh, this album ladies and gentlemen runs in at 70 minutes in length but there's a certain small uh, amount of fans in the ocean size community <laughs> not that there really is an ocean size community who say that this album is like a sellout album or it's them making an album of compromise because the label the label here is beggars banquet records and for the first album it's the same label but maybe they wanted a more concise easier to listen to album but at the end of the day 10 tracks 70 minutes in length and still a decent number of pieces of music here which are very progressive and all over the place and not just chorus verse chorus so I have to say everyone in two position it gets a bit of a bad stick at times from some of the fan base but I absolutely adore it pardon me and I also have to say Jesus Christ my teeth are repeating on me that there's quite a few pieces of music here which have an electronic influence and I love me some electronic music in one such as Mine Host and No Tomorrow and New Pin. Absolutely love those tracks. Music for a Nurse, the most beautiful track on here. Very emotional and gorgeous. Meredith, a very good rock song. A Homage to a Shame, the heaviest on the album, I'd say. Heaven Alive is amazing. I love singing along to that one. The Charm Offensive, You Can't Keep a Bad Man Down, awesome name. And Ornament the Last Wrongs. And I think yeah it's my favorite song on the album it's the one i'm going to be dropping in the drop down box below and it runs in at nine minutes 21 ornament the last wrongs um one of those forward slashes again ocean size do have a few of those because it is essentially two songs in one and the ending is it's just really beautiful a lot of vocals guitars and piano and ambience electronics jesus christ it's all popping off I wish I could explain it better. I felt when I did my Anathema, Catatonia, Porcupine Trees, uh, Tree Video, that I could explain the music a little bit better. But I'm really struggling with Ocean Size as somebody who isn't very musical. And I feel a bit annoyed by that. But I think it's because the band is so damn good and because there's so much going on. I, quite, I can't quite explain it. I think that's what it is. And uh, yeah, this album... I go on Sputnik Music a lot of the time, and on that website, albums are ranked out for five. And this album, I think, is the second worst ranked, and then I think it's Self Preserved, which might be the worst, just about. But a lot of people were saying that they didn't like it and everything. It's like a pop record. I, I don't understand that. I don't understand the the dislike for this album. I don't feel like it's too watered down like some people do. 
mine host and new pin. I love that electronic edge that it has and every single track on here I like and I think it's got a good pacing and yeah best song till last always great when you finish the album with a colossal track but ladies and gentlemen how long have we been going now only 15 minutes this is much much shorter than the Catatonia and Aphema and Porcupine Tree videos that I did but I'm glad that I can look at the length here and we can talk about the next album coming up because and I'm, I'm annoying myself now with how much I'm repeatedly talking about Catatonia, Anathema, Pokemon Tree, those videos, because some Ocean Size fans might not have ever listened to any of those bands, I don't know. But what I would say is all those albums, I knew just about what my favourite Pokemon Tree was, and Catatonia, Anathema, but I tell you right now, I might not like Ocean Size as a band overall in their discography as much as those bands, but this next album might top everything those bands have done and it might be one of my top 10 albums of all time i want to get it on vinyl i'm willing to sell my soul for it on vinyl and i will never ever stop waxing lyrical and talking about how freaking amazing this album is and to be honest with you by the time this video is done i wouldn't be surprised if we spend at least over half the video talking about this masterpiece which I do believe and do think that most Ocean Size fans say is the best of course it's all about opinions like I said at the start of the video some people might not think it's the best I wouldn't be able to believe it if some people thought it was the worst but whatever it is <laughs> the third album from the year 2007 and it is called Frames and I am going to get the lyrics up here because we're going to look at this one in a little bit more depth it says here, ladies and gentlemen, Wikipedia, Frames is the third studio album by a British progressive rock band, Ocean Size, released in October 2007. And let me have a look here. When John Ellis left, I thought we were fucked. This is not a slight on Stephen Hodson, and I never said to anybody that I didn't think it would be as good anymore, but I had a vibe about it. Then halfway through mixing it, really started to make sense, and I knew it would be something our fans would like. It's the kind of record they would want us to make. Although I expect our hardcore fans to get it and hate and say, what have they done? Then a year later, it'll be the favourite record. Oh, <sighs> I got the motherfucking goosebumps. Because initially, that is true. I didn't like this album as much. It is a grower and there's only eight tracks here. But one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my God. The shortest song of this album is six minutes and 32 in length. So it's kind of like Fear of Blank Planet by um, Porcupine Tree. Less songs, but longer songs. It's got a consistent vibe, this album. It's not really a concept album, but there's a, a feeling of melancholy throughout it, for me, that doesn't exist in any of their other albums. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. And there are a few heavier tracks here, but I just feel like this, even though it's still running at, what, 66 minutes in length, slightly shorter than Ephlores, or much shorter than Ephlores, and even shorter still than everyone in two position. It's kind of hard to believe for me. But yeah, this album, I'd say it's near perfect. There's one or two issues I have about it, but overall, it's on another level. And the album starts off with a song called Commemorative 9-11 T-shirt, and... I remember online reading for years, why is it called that? It's not about 9-11, the event. It's a year's 9-11 to t-shirt. The album features a lot of songs about grudges and negative energy, apparently. I don't really get that. With the song Commemorative 9-11 t-shirt inspired by a gift to Venet by Band Cardiacs, which includes a time signature of 11-8 or 9-8. Um, wait a minute. Oh, here we go. The 9-11 t-shirt, blah, blah, blah. It's not about 9-11. I was sold the t-shirt by the singer of the Cardiacs. On the label, it read for ages 9-11. And when he sold it to me, he said, oh, here's one of our commemorative 9-11 t-shirts. So I got thinking about what sort of person would wear a 9-11 t-shirt. Somebody who's not really looking forward to the future. But 
what, 9, 11 ages? I mean, well, by the time you get to 12, it's not going to fit you anyway, is it? So it is, when you're that age, you don't really wear clothes for much longer than that. So it kind of does make sense, but I do like that little story there. And the ink drawings featured in the album's artwork, because the album cover is pretty damn cool, are by Nine Inch Nails and Guns N' Roses guitarist Robin Fink. Guitarist Gambler states that Fink is a hero of mine. We saw his art. It is pretty ambiguous and amazing. So we just asked him if he could if we could use some of his stuff. And when you look at some of the rankings here, BBC Music, three and a half star at five, ridiculous. Um, three and a half by Music, OMH. There's a few places like Rock Loader and Scene Point Blank here who are saying it's a bit of a masterpiece, four out of five on Sputnik. But overall, I don't think this album gets the props that it deserves. If you've never listened to Oceanside before, you need, this is the, definitive album it's the best but because it isn't the easiest to get into perhaps i wouldn't say listen to it off the bat i think everyone into position it is a good introduction to the band but it's not because it's a sellout or watered down album i just think it's a bit easier to digest but like i said before i'll stick up for that album unfamiliar trail of fire savant only twin an old friend of the christies sleeping dogs and dead lions and the frame ladies and gentlemen Whew, running in at 10 minutes and 40 seconds my favorite oceanside song and one of my favorite pieces of music ever actually it's a toss-up between trail of fire and the frame trail of fire whenever that song comes up on shuffle on my ipod yet my ipod classic is still just about working oh my god how the fuck is it still working i don't know but it is every time that song comes up i'm like yeah, I'm not going to skip this. I have to listen to it. I like the lyrics on this album better than any Ocean Size album. I think the production's better. I think Venet is at his best here. There's just something. There's an emotion. There's a feeling. It's in the air. I've spoke about it before with these kind of bands where everything is just popping off. Everything is perfect. And somehow a masterpiece is created by a bunch of motherfucking geniuses. And that is what happened here. And if this album ever goes on vinyl, I need this on vinyl. That's all I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Trail of Fire. Let's have a look at the lyrics here. I don't think there'll be much, because sometimes on, um, what's it called, Genius.com, you get a little bit of a, a blurb, a bit of extra information on the song, but I don't think Ocean Size are really popular enough for that. So just repeating the lyrics, but it, the, the lyrics here are really nice. I think they're more prominent and they make more sense to me, and I can sing them back to myself when I'm listening to it. But the piano, the introduction of this, it's so beautiful, goosebump inducing, and unsung, untied, unalive is the repeated line that Venet um, sings at the end of this. And in, I don't know, man, it's just so damn good, and I can't really explain it any better than that. <laughs> I wish I could. Savant, that is a beautiful emotional introduction. And there's a, oh yeah, lyrics, we're talking about lyrics now. Um, where others float, you and I crash land. Where I see us in faraway skies, I could not say. Where I am lost, the darkness falls upon the day. Um, that's repeated quite a lot, and quite a lot of repeated lyrics in this album, to be honest with you. Again, and again, and again. And it does not matter, because I've said before, and I'll say it again for me personally, some inter interesting pro thought provoking lyrics is good but it's about the music more than anything i've read a lot of reviews for this song i just don't get the gushing love it has poured over it keith sinclair on genius.com keith sinclair that's for you my friend only twin you used to be like my twin run tommy run tommy run did you get all you want that's a bit of a strange start with this one this has got quite a darker edge this track i'm just going to say that a darker edge and keith sinclair saying no that's a song gonna have fuck off you idiot listening to ocean size the first time obviously and thinking you know what what you dickhead an old friend of the christies is this the instrumental or is that i do get these tracks mixed up there's one which is an absolute colossal banger and then there's an instrumental oh yeah um, an old friend of the christies is an instrumental it's the same repeated line. Dun, 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 dun. The whole way through. It sometimes can get a little dull and boring. Perhaps it goes on a little too long. But 
if I listen to the album from start to finish, then it does become a must listen. And Sleeping Dogs and Dead Lions is the heaviest track on the album. I'd have to say it's possibly my least favourite, but it's gnarly, it's all over the place, it's off kilter, it's weird, it's disturbing, I would say, this one as well. And the vocals are just, they're hard to understand, but it just has a feeling of everything breaking down and going apeshit. And I really like that about that track. It's pretty cool. Now there's a song as well called Voorhees, Jason Voorhees, which is a, well, it's not on the main album. Let's have a look here. You just say, oh, it's a B-side? I think I've got it on my iTunes. Really good song. Listen to Voorhees if it's not on your version of Frames. But we need now to digest the last song on the album, The Frame. 10 minutes 40 in length. A very special song for me. I think on my YouTube music favourites, there's songs on there that I adore. There's songs on there that I just like and sometimes I put it on my favourites but it's not one of my favourite songs of all time. I think there might be one or two Ocean Song tracks on there. I think there's like 400 songs altogether. It's quite a long list of collection of music but the frame is definitely one of those ocean size songs which is on there my favorites and yeah it's absolutely gorgeous it's a very very long introduction until then it, about maybe a minute and a half two minutes into it comes in with the vocals i can hold you all together you won't fall with the troops that we assembled and the bond we forged Though this sketch is getting old now, the cracks don't show. Time won't change a thing when I'm gone. Don't grab the wheel too tightly, my son. Everything you need is done. I would have thought you'd won by now. Um, and then, you know, there's more lyrics here that are good, but not quite as good as that. And then, at the end, I am not the pitcher now. I am, repeats this lyric, and then it says, I am the frame. Oh my god now there is nothing here on genius.com uh, which talks about what the song is about but there's about there's a bit of talk about a son there and i do get that family vibe uh, the mantle being passed from father to son and all that kind of shit gives me goosebumps uh, all parents need to hear this song i don't even have children and this song makes me tear up yeah, I mean, my bottom lip has been going for the last couple of minutes talking about this song. Um, and it's it's the best song. It's a masterpiece. It, I love the fact that it's the last track on the album. And the solo at the end is amazing. The guitar piece, it's beautiful. It's anthemic. These are all words that I've already said how long we're running in at now. Nearly 30 minutes, beautiful, just under 30 minutes, that's good. And if you don't like this, then I don't know what is wrong with you, really. You can see on YouTube the live version of this track, but I would suggest not to listen to it until you've listened to the studio version. It's great, they were brilliant live, but uh, yeah. I just don't feel like there's enough talk on here, there's not enough more needs to be said about some of these bands that have split up like i'm going on most recent newest first on youtube for the live version of the frame which was recorded in 2008 i think in manchester and the last comment was nearly two years ago man i miss ocean size a year and a half ago a year and a half has passed 133,000 views i mean fucking hell man 600 thumbs up is this all these kind of bands are worth these bands that this kind of music i'm going to be listening to forever you can't just get music as good as this every year there's no band in my opinion in the next year is going to make an album half as good as this i've said it before you know if you guys want to introduce me to a bit of new prog i've, I've tried in the last couple of weeks of listening to some hacken and leprous i appreciate what these bands are doing but they, they seem to be making experimental music for the sake of it and I can't quite get into it. I don't like the production and maybe I'm just a, a bald in boomer who's got nothing more to give but I don't know man. The Frame is a masterpiece. I love it. Makes me nearly cry every time I listen to it. And ladies and gentlemen, if you've never listened to Ocean Size, please 
do so. But next up, ladies and gentlemen, there's a band from Seattle. There's a band from Birmingham. I'm actually going to let you in on the secret. I'm not going to keep it from you. Worst to best, Alice in Chains. Worst to best, Black Sabbath. But here's the catch. It's only the Aussie era. So I was thinking, how can I do Sabbath? I mean, some of that 90s and 80s shit material, I never even fucking heard. But then I thought, let's just do the Aussie era, because it's the best era. So I'll see you in the next couple of months for those videos. And also, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, bit more video game content to come. But there may be a bit of downtime. Um, not always free to make videos at the moment. I've not made a video in quite a while. But I hope, if possible, to react to e uh, the EA Play thing. We're going to get some kind of Dead Space remaster or Dead Space um, reboot. And as a huge Dead Space fan, I'm hyped, but I fucking hate it, yeah, so I'm a bit worried about it. But uh, yeah, I'll be uploading my reaction to that when it happens in about two weeks. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. Oh, my microphone's bloody falling off. What the fuck?